All right, with this forecast video update on this Monday, the 4th of October, this is the evening edition. I am Josh Brown. I hope that you guys had a great weekend and also a great Monday. And I have to say, it's been really just a warm weekend we had across Central Florida. And I expect the warmness to continue as we head into this new full work week, the first full work week that is of October. But there are some rain chances on the way as we head towards this week as well. And some uh, could produce some thunderstorms uh, as well. So something we're going to have to watch closely. And uh, also the tropics are still uh, looking, maybe not as super busy right now, but uh, there's still some activity happening in the Atlantic. So we'll have that update here in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and take a look what's happening right now, currently on the radar and see what's going on in central Florida weather-wise. And uh, as you can see right now that we have some still some showers right now just to the west of Orlando. So as we go, as we go ahead and zoom in into uh, Lake County, because that's where the heaviest of the showers are at right now. And it's, and it's basically just right here in the Clearmont community. So that's where the heaviest of the shower is located as of this uh, Monday evening. And as I uh, put this in motion, it uh, looks like that little heavier shower is moving from east to west. Uh, we'll say at about uh, 35 to 45 miles per hour. And it's not just Clearmont that is seeing a heavier shower uh, at the moment, but also Mineola seeing some pretty decent uh, heavier showers too but they should not last uh, any much longer. And uh, as far as the lightning goes with this, with this uh, little heavier guy right there, let me, let me go ahead and turn on the lightning uh, strike product. And so far, according to what I'm seeing here on the radar, there's only one lightning strike uh, detected right here just to the north and west of Mineola. But under the that, I think most of you are maybe just hearing rumbles of thunder for those of you that live in, in uh, Lake County. And just to be clear, though, we're not expecting anything severe for the rest of this evening. So that's the good news. We would like to hear that we're not expecting any any severe weather. But just be aware that uh, this heavier shower could produce, again, just a few, a few rubbles of thunder, maybe one or two lightning strikes, but nothing widespread to worry about. So what we're going to do is right now is go ahead and put a track on this uh, heavier shower. Again, that is located from the Mediola community. And again, this is moving. This is moving due west. Put with the steer at about uh, 35, perhaps around 40 miles per hour. And as I fix the uh, storm track, because it's, it's uh, 802. Seems like it should be affecting places like uh, Mascot at uh, 814, Sloan's Ridge at 820, and Tuscanoga at about uh, 820 as well. This is located in the western corner of Lake County. So if you live in these uh, communities that's on the list, again, just uh, a heads up that you could see a heavier shower that may roll in into y'all's direction in the next uh, several minutes. So so, so just a uh, heads up. And it's not just uh, Lake County that is seeing, seeing showers and a couple of uh, thunder showers this evening, but there's also a little bit of, a little bit of, a little bit, excuse me, of some of that uh, shower activity right now uh, in the southern corner of Sumter County. This is, this is just right along Highway 50, south and east of Bushnell. So it looks like this could potentially uh, affect uh, places uh, like near Interstate 75 in the southwestern corner of Sumter County and near Cortez Boulevard, which is still known as Highway 50, in just a little bit. But as we pan a little more south here, there's also some, also some more isolated showers uh, this evening. We'll zoom in a little closer here down towards uh, the, the panhandle of Sumter County because that's where the rain is at. And this is located uh, just not that far from Colt Creek State Park. So Colt Creek State Park, uh, which is in Polk County, by the way, and also uh, north of there, that's where the showers are at this evening. And it looks like this could be heading into Dade City uh, in just a little bit, at least with the next batch, that is. But uh, other than that, the rest of Central Florida is looking quiet, including right here in Orlando. I have to say other places actually saw some spottier showers this afternoon, and I expect to see the same thing as we head towards tomorrow. But again, the better chance to see some rain and storms will hold off until as we head into the later part of this week and perhaps into the weekend. So yes, the rain could really interrupt your weekend plans uh, for outdoors if you have some, which I'll explain more about that here with the GFS in just a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and take a look at uh, Futurecast and show you the timing of who will see some spotty showers for the next uh, few days. And again, not everybody, not everybody will see rain 
tomorrow and Wednesday since the rain chances will be spotty and isolated, but some of you could see that. And before we move on, folks, if you're just uh, popping into Facebook Live on this uh, Monday evening, I do not mind if you could all go ahead and share this uh, live feed to your other Facebook followers because you know my motto, and that is uh, sharing is caring. And before we also move on, I'm going to go ahead and share this uh, Facebook Live feed to one of my other live uh, Facebook pages. So as always, just hang on just a minute and we will move on. And by the way, if you can tell in the background that it's not really my room, uh, my apartment is getting, getting a, uh, uh, some painting, so that's why that uh, I'm doing the live forecast from the guest room. Hopefully I should be able to do the uh, update tomorrow night from back in my room. If not, then it may be Wednesday. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at FutureCast. So again, heading into the rest of this evening, so hopefully in the next uh, hour or so, we'll see these uh, heavier showers that is in Lake County uh, fade, at least fade away in some. And then as we head towards late evening and perhaps into the overnight, looks like most of us should be dry, but notice over towards the coastal communities, let's say from Daytona to New Smyrna and Melbourne, well, east of there that is, but over near Cape Canaveral, uh, there could be one or two isolated showers that could, you know, form as we head towards the, uh, at least the overnight hours. Otherwise, we'll be looking pretty dry. And then as you uh, head out the door for work and school in the morning, uh, looks like we'll see again things looking pretty dry. We'll see, we should be able to see another sunny start to the day. But again, if you live right along I-95, just don't be surprised that a few showers could uh, at least you know, pop up anywhere from Daytona Beach back into uh, Titusville, perhaps Palm Coast too, could see a couple of showers that may form as we head towards the eight o'clock hour tomorrow morning. But again, the rest of the viewing area should be uh, pretty dry to begin with. And then as we head into the rest of the uh, rest of the day, that is so heading into around two, about uh, two and three o'clock, it looks like, like we saw today, some more showers, spotty showers, that is, will start to uh, form across portions of central Florida. So anywhere back, let's say, from uh, near the Seminole into the Volusia County line, perhaps back into eastern Orange County, eastern Osceola, uh, up towards, uh, let's say, near Lake George and back down towards near the Paisley area. So there could be some spottier showers that may form as we head towards the 3 o'clock hour uh, tomorrow. And again, temperatures will be warm with uh, upper 80s and perhaps some in the low 90s. And then as you uh, head out ahead, uh, you know, home from work and school, at least your drive home from work and school, that is, by around 5 and 6. It looks like there could be still some leftover showers in some places. Some could be heavy at times, but we're not expecting anything severe or any potential widespread heavy rain. But but still, some spots could see maybe just a heavier shower or two, like right up here towards the northeastern corner of Lake County. Could see could see maybe a heavier shower at about 6 p.m. tomorrow evening and perhaps back into eastern Orange County and perhaps one or two back into Osceola counties. And then heading into about eight or nine o'clock, it looks like any spotty showers are left over. Will be will be mostly uh, will most will mostly weekend and fade away. And that'll give that'll give the rest of the nighttime hours tomorrow night looking pretty dry. And even the same thing as we head towards the overnight hours. And two, but as we head towards Wednesday morning, again as you head out the door for work and school, uh, looks like we we'll see another good sunny start with low temperatures. Uh, Again, a bit humid, so it won't be as cool like it was last week when we had lows in the 60s. So instead, most of, most of us will, will be back in the 70s to begin with uh, for the next uh, summer mornings uh, this week, including Wednesday. So just keep that in mind. But again, it will be another dry start to the day. And then afterwards, as we head towards the later part of the day, at least the afternoon portion, that is. So about around 4 p.m., it looks like we could see, again, just a couple of one or two spotty showers. Again, we'll call for about a 20 to a 30 percent coverage. 
in portions of central Florida. But other than that, it looks like most of us should be pretty dry, perhaps a partly sunny sky will call with the uh, temperatures again staying warm and a bit humid with upper 80s and perhaps into the uh, low 90s. And the same thing goes for the evening hours Wednesday again, just again, just a possible shower or two this time, maybe for areas west of Interstate 4. Other than that, looking pretty dry. And then as the clock ends all the way towards 2 in the morning on Thursday, so the overnight portions of uh, Wednesday night and early Thursday, again, stays mainly dry. So there you will pretty much have it there. So next thing we'll, we'll go ahead and take a look at is the tropics. And yes, there's still some activity right now happening in the Atlantic because we're still in the busy part of hurricane season, but it doesn't usually wind down until around the middle of October. So as we turn on the uh, tropical satellite in the Atlantic, and the latest uh, tracks of the storms. And what's left of it is uh, Hurricane Sam. And as you can see, it is now a weaker hurricane. It's not, a, it's not really a major storm anymore, but as you can see here that Sam is, again, a category one storm as winds continue to weaken down to about 92 miles per hour. And it's moving, to, it's moving at a pretty quick pace. Take a look at this, it's moving to the Northeast at 36 miles per hour. So it's moving at, at a pretty good speed, according to the latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center. And it looks like it will stay as a cat one at least through about two o'clock in the afternoon. And then it should be able to uh, make it to a, a right turn to the east, downgrade back to a tropical storm, and then back to a northerly turn, and then taking it to a westerly turn by the end of this week. So, yeah. So Sam's been around at least for the past uh, week or so. Because, again, earlier in the week last week, it was a major Category 4 storm. But it is not anymore. It is a cat one storm. And then, of course, this is uh, what is left here of uh, Tropical Storm Victor, still the remnant, the remnants of the storm this evening, with winds uh, continue to weaken at 30 miles per hour, moving to west-northwest at 15. But we're watching this little tropical low right now that is swarming right here in the Atlantic, and that's why that it could bring bigger rain chances here in central Florida as we head into the next uh, few days. So that is something, something, again, we'll have to watch closely. But as of right now, the National Hurricane Center is given a uh, about, about, about a 10 percent or excuse me, 30 percent, uh, excuse me. So 30 percent probability of a tropical development in the next five days. So it looks like uh, it's going to stay low uh, through the rest of this week. But if I can, let me go ahead and turn on the uh, spaghetti models. And it looks like according to the uh, spaghetti models, it shows that with this little low that is uh, East of the Bahamas and just right near Turks and Caicos is going to be moving to the north and up towards the northeast in the next several days. So this could potentially affect Bermuda. But again, here in central Florida, the biggest part, again, will stay east. But the remnants will bring, again, some bigger rain chances by the later part of this week. And this is a good thing because we could use some more rain after we saw a dry week last week. So, so yeah. But uh, let's go ahead and take let's go ahead and take a look what's happening as we pan over to the east uh, in the coast of Africa. And as you can see, there is some pretty decent moisture over near the coast of coast of Africa that's producing a lot of showers and tropical downpours this evening. But for the most part, it doesn't show anything as far as disturb disturbances go from the National Hurricane Center. But that's something again we'll have to uh, keep a close eye on as we head into the next uh, coming days. But Usually we don't see a whole lot of activity coming in from the coast, from the coast of Africa for October, because usually in October during the middle part of hurricane season, uh, usually there'll be some uh, bigger developments uh, forming in the Gulf Coast and perhaps right here in the eastern sections uh, of the United States, at least off the coast of the eastern United States, but parts of the Atlantic. That's, so that's the hottest spot for October. So, so it's something to watch, but as of right now, it doesn't show anything as far as big storms are our concern uh, as we get through the next uh, five days. So that's the good news. So that's, that's pretty much the update in the tropics. And of course, you may, of course you may notice here on Barron uh, that there are some, uh, some rain showers and thunderstorms right now happening across parts of the Mississippi Valley region this evening, especially in Alabama and Georgia, where there's a lot of flash flood warnings and flood advisories uh, in effect. Uh, because because of the he because of the heavier rain, but we're not expecting any of that to happen again for, in the next uh, few days. So that will stay mainly north of here. 
All right, so as we send back into uh, back into Central Florida, so back back to home. Before we get into the GFS mode, we'll get a, we'll get a last look at the radar one more time. Because if you're just popping into uh, Facebook Live this evening, or maybe just now, and if you maybe uh, missed it, well, here it is again. And again, the only thing we're seeing here is just uh, some leftover showers, and some are, some are producing a quick heavier shower, especially right here, uh, again in Lake County, around the cities of Clermont and Mineola. But again, we're not expecting anything severe for the rest of tonight. And it seems like uh, at the heaviest rain is basically now moving into the northern city, city limits of uh, Grove Lent and right near the mascot community. So this is right along and north of Highway 50 is where the heaviest of the shower is uh, tonight. And again, it's going to move west, potentially affecting the eastern and central portions of Sumter County, especially near the Bushnell community, uh, probably in the next uh, half hour, unless it starts to uh, die down uh, sooner. But like I said, the rest of Central Florida is looking quiet, including right here in Metro Orlando. All right, so now to the GFS. So, so we're going to begin with uh, Thursday, which is uh, October 7th. Again, that's what we'll see. The rain chances increase a bit, so we'll call for just about a 40 to a 50 percent coverage of so some scattered showers and storms to return as we head into the day Thursday. But the widespread coverage again looks to stay up towards the north and around the Mississippi Valley region, where the flash flood threat may continue by then. So, so just keep that in mind. But we're not expecting any of that to happen here in central Florida. So the rain chances will be scattered in nature. And uh, high temperatures for that day, again, looks to stay relatively warm and muggy with upper 80s and low 90s. So, yeah, it's going to be feeling a bit more like summer again as we are kicking off the first full week of October after we saw some slightly cool, te cool temperatures this past week. So, so they're all gone. So that's that most, of, so most of that's going to stay up to the north because of the heavier rain. We're highs around Alabama and Georgia. We mostly in the 70s and into the low 80s. Now, what about the Friday? We close out the uh, first full week of October. Again, there could be some scattered, uh, more scattered showers, that is, and perhaps some thunderstorms across portions of central Florida. And right now, the best chance to see scattered uh, storms will be mostly just right along the I-95 corridor. So between Daytona Beach and Titusville, and perhaps around the Melbourne areas, that's where there'll be some better scattered chances of rain and storms. But if you go towards I-4 and west, uh, there'll be about a 30 to a 40 percent cover. So we'll call of some isolated to a few scattered uh, late day thunderstorm activity. But again, the biggest the biggest chance I'm talking about would be mostly staying north across the eastern half of Alabama and most of Georgia, where, where again, the flash flood threat will continue uh, in the next uh, several days. All right, and temperature-wise, again, for highs Friday the, the 8th, we'll be mostly, again, staying warm and muggy with upper 80s and into the low 90s. But again, if you need some more cool weather, it looks like you'll have to go north because because of the heavy rain that will continue up and around the Mississippi Valley. That will keep the temperatures down with 70s and perhaps into the lower 80s. But uh, this, is what I, this is what I was talking about here a little while ago, the weekend forecast. And again, we're talking about even a much better coverage of showers and storms, especially as we head into the day on at least this upcoming Saturday, October 9th. So if we got some big plants outdoors on Saturday, you may need to have the ponchos uh, handy because we're, we're expecting some on and off uh, rain and storms at times. So we're going to call our coverage at 60% as we head towards the day Saturday, and perhaps there'll be some more scattered, or not scattered, but bigger coverage of rain also up around the eastern and southeast corner of Georgia and up towards South Carolina. So yeah, it could be a, a soggy weekend ahead here for the state, and of course elsewhere in the southeast. But still the temperatures will not, uh, will not still not cool down that much. As you can see here, that we'll be, most, we'll be mostly staying in the upper 80s to about low 90s, we'll call, as we head towards the day Saturday. But again, if we need some more cool temperatures, at least the bigger cool temperatures, that is, it's going to stay, again, relatively north, where it'll be highs in the 70s and into the low 80s. Oh, 
Oh, and I, and I just see that Mike Pierce just popped in in the house this evening. Well, good to have you, sir. And again, thank you for stopping by and saying hello. I do, I do really appreciate it. All right, so well, let's get into today, Sunday. And according to the GFS, it looks like the rain chances will start to lower just a bit. Not that much, but just a little bit. So we'll call for just about a 40% coverage uh, instead of some scattered showers and storms. But again, you may need the poncho, Sandy, because it'll be it could be on and off at some at some times as we head towards uh, this upcoming Sunday. But notice down towards South Florida, where you can see here my arrow circling, uh, that's where they're expecting a much better coverage of rain of rain to continue, especially between Miami and right over towards near the Marco Island area. And uh, temperatures for highs that day, again, looks to stay relatively warm and a little humid. So instead of seeing lower 90s for everybody here in Central Florida on Sunday, we'll see mostly mid to upper 80s, which is not too bad. But again, you'll still feel that humidity in the air once you step outside for plants that you may have on that day. But again, if you go north, that's where most of the fall cool temperatures will remain with some 70s and perhaps lower 80s. All right, now getting, getting into the beginning of next week. This is a week from today, Monday, October 11th, and you can see the rain chances will start to uh, at least wind down somewhat a bit. So instead of seeing a better coverage of rain like we may see over the weekend, we'll see just about a 30% coverage of some isolated showers and maybe a passing storm, but again, not expecting anything too widespread as far as severe weather goes, if that is if that appears to be correct. But again, temperature wise looks to stay relatively warm with mainly upper 80s, but some localized spots maybe hitting close to 90 or so, or maybe at 90 too. So again, that's for Monday of next week. But again, if you go north around the Mississippi Valley, temperatures will still be again remaining cooler, at least feeling mostly like fall with upper 70s and into the low 80s. Now, here is a week from tomorrow. This takes you to next Tuesday, October 12th. And by the way, next Monday is Columbus Day, in case if you in case if you forgot it, and I forgot about it too. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. So, but, but the day after Columbus Day, which is next Tuesday, uh, seems like the rain chances will stay, again, mostly isolated in nature. And this time the focus looks to be just south and east of Orlando, according to the GFS. So basically anywhere from portions of Osceola, Polk, and Brevard County, so that's where there'll be some isolated showers and a couple of thunder showers as we approach that day. But the rest of Central Florida looks to stay mainly quiet as far as the weather goes on Tuesday of next week. And of course, it looks like some more wet weather, wet weather could be on the way for the folks up around the Mississippi Valley region by that day too. And again, again, again here's a look at the high temperatures uh, down below. As, as of right now, it looks like we'll call for highs in the upper 80s to some localized places in the low 90s. Uh, as we as we approach uh, that day, and this is next Tuesday I'm talking about. So it's still warm and humid for this time of year, at least for early October, that is. But again, if you go north, uh, temperatures will be uh, still looking not too bad, where there'll be some upper 70s and into the low 80s. Now, as we head into next Wednesday, October 13th, and you can see here on the GFS that weatherwise looks to stay mainly quiet. So, so we're expecting lots of more sunshine. But if, again, if you go towards the eastern portions of central Florida, especially near, especially on, along the coast of Volusia, Flagler, and Brevard counties, there'll be just a slim chance of a coastal shower or two. But uh, other than that, uh, nothing too widespread to worry about. Uh, if, for those of you maybe for those of you that might be heading to the beach for maybe for fall break. And here's a look at those high temperatures next Wednesday. And you can see that uh, we'll be mostly, again, staying warm and muggy with upper 80s and low 90s to remain in central Florida. And it looks like temperatures may start to warm up just a little bit if you live up in the Mississippi Valley, but mostly still average for this time of year. So instead of seeing upper 80s to near 90, like we may, like we may see here in central Florida by next Wednesday, it looks like temperatures will be instead in the upper 70s, especially in eastern Alabama and west Georgia and others in the low to middle 80s. All right, now here is next Thursday, October 14th. And again, if you live along, along the coast of Interstate 95, 
can't rule out just a brief uh, coastal shower or two, but otherwise rain chances stay slow. And the rest of central Florida looks to stay mainly quiet with lots of sunshine, if it's the case. But no, but, but, but if you uh, notice uh, west you go towards the Mississippi Valley region, region especially in Mississippi and Louisiana, uh, looks like a, looks like another system may start to uh, develop, and that could bring another batch of showers and storms. So we'll have to watch that closely. But it could change though. And here, temperature-wise for Central Florida, again, looks to stay relatively warm and muggy as we continue to remain in the mid to upper 80s with some localized spots in the low 90s. And again, if you go north, uh, temperatures will be, will be feeling much like fall again as the, as the numbers go down into the 60s, especially in South Carolina, others in the 70s to the low 80s. So that's where the temperatures will be feeling like if you go north of, uh, of Florida. All right, as we now enter the land of voodoo country, this takes you to Friday, October 15th. And you can see here on the GFS, again, if you live uh, just near the coast of Interstate 95, I can't rule out again a brief coastal shower or two, especially near the coast, the coastal areas of Palm Coast, Flagler Beach, Daytona, New Smyrna, back down towards uh, Cape Canaveral. So there could be a brief uh, coastal shower or two to continue for the day on Friday the 15th, but the rest of the uh, state looks to stay mainly quiet. And as we uh, take a look again with our with those uh, high temperatures, and wow, look at this! After seeing a, I guess you can say the warm next several days, including parts of next week in Central Florida, uh, looks like the humidity levels and the warm temperatures may start to uh, wind things down a bit, if that is the case. And maybe that could be ahead of another that could be ahead of a cold front, uh, if that is the case. And behind it, that could bring temperatures down into the upper 70s, and perhaps perhaps into the low 80s. So that could be feeling pretty good, at least to get outside and enjoy these fall-like uh, conditions. So that's something, uh, once again, we'll have to uh, keep an eye out, but you know, it's kind of too early to tell. So that's why things could still change as we head closer. But north you go, temperatures will be even feeling more cooler, where there'll be some 60s, especially near Charleston and others around the Mississippi Valley in the uh, mid to upper 70s to about 80, especially in the Southern part of Alabama. All right, now taking you to Saturday, October 16th, and it looks like there might be a tropical low that may try to develop here off the Atlantic, and that could bring some bigger impacts if that is the case over towards the coast of Charleston and Myrtle Beach, uh, South Carolina. But it looks like uh, for here in central Florida, especially if you live along the coast of Interstate 95, the impacts looks remain minimal. But again, that's something we'll have to keep a close eye on, but the rest of the state looks to stay quiet as far as, again, the GFS trend goes. And look at this. Again, it looks like temperatures will stay relatively cool. So it's going to be feeling more the way of fall, not for the not this weekend, but into the next weekend. This is for Saturday, October 16th. And you can see here that we will be mostly in the mid-70s here all across the entire state. But notice up here across Georgia and South Carolina, because of that tropical low off near the coast of Charleston, that's going to really cool things down even more with temperatures dropping into the mid, maybe mid to upper 60s for highs on that day if that is the case so this is why fall is coming it's coming but it takes you know it takes some time you know to uh, arrive but if we take a look at the low temperature still for the morning of sunday october 17th take a look at this it shows here that we could see morning low temperature starting off in the mid or, or maybe you should say low to mid 60s in some places with others maybe in the upper 60s so we can see that again during the morning hours of Sunday the 17th, but notice north and west you go across portions of the Mississippi Valley. There could even be some more, even more cool temperatures with some upper 50s to start the day and perhaps with some low to mid 60s. So, yep, this is why fall is coming, at least for the southeast, since that, you know, starts a little bit later than what the other states in the U.S. will see. That's just how it works. And... But, but uh, later in the afternoon on that same day, so again, this is for Sunday, October 17th, you can see here that most of, a, most of Central Florida looks to stay uh, somewhat relatively dry. But if you go towards the west of Interstate 4, can't, I can't rule out maybe just a brief shower or two, one or two showers, that is. Again, if you live west of Interstate 4, 
But again, the bigger impacts about tropical low will be mostly staying up towards the north of here. So across, again, most for, mo for most areas in South Carolina and into East Georgia, there could be some pretty decent uh, impacts uh, with, with maybe some heavier rains that could cause maybe some flooding concerns uh, if that is the case. So again, that's something we'll have to pay attention to. But again, it's just too early to tell since we are two weeks off. So, that, so that's why that we call this the land of voodoo because it could change. But here, temperature-wise in Central Florida for the day on the 17th looks to stay, again, cooler with mid to upper 70s and even some places, localized places, that is, in the low 80s. And again, if you go even more north across the eastern half of Alabama and most of uh, Georgia, uh, temperatures are going to be feeling much, much, much cooler. We're talking about maybe some 60s and into the low 70s. So how about that? All right, now here is two weeks from today. This takes you to Monday, October 18th. And you notice on the GFS that there could be, again, just some, some possible isolated showers that could try to develop here across portions of central Florida. But again, we're not expecting anything widespread or major. Again, all that uh, better chances of rain is going to stay up towards the north across the eastern sections of Georgia and all the way up towards the uh, eastern half of the United States. Again, that's because of the remnants of that tropical low. So we'll have to watch that again closely, but it could change. So I'll keep you posted. But the warmness may come back by the 18th of October after a cooler weekend the next weekend. So it looks like temperatures will be, will be back to uh, average instead of seeing 70s where we could see mid to upper 80s. So it's going to so yep, it's going to turn warm again if that is the case. But more cool weather continues to appear north across the Mississippi Valley, really be some more in the way of 60s, 70s, and perhaps some areas, especially in South Georgia and up towards Charleston in the lower 80s. All right, uh, taking you to two weeks from tomorrow. This takes you to Tuesday, October 19th. And you can see that some good chances of rain could make a comeback for some places, but not everybody. So anywhere from portions of Flagler and Marion counties, it could be a better shot of some scattered showers and maybe if not a few thunderstorms. But again, it's just too early to tell. But the rest of Central Florida, once again, looks to stay relatively dry. Could be maybe a shower or two, but nothing too widespread. So again, that's something we'll have to uh, pay attention to, but that's, you know, that's too early to tell. And again, here's a look at those high temperatures. And it looks like there might be another front that may try to slide in from the north to south. But ahead of it, temperature wise here in central Florida will stay mostly average in the mid to upper 80s. But behind it, because of the rain and because of the cold front, that's going to drop down temperatures to, again, feeling more of the way of fall with some uh, upper mid to upper 70s and perhaps some in the low 80s. And last but not least, the GFS trend takes you all the way to Wednesday, October 20th, and it looks like that same system will bring a better shot of some more showers and storms across uh, central Florida. So we'll have to wait and see, but again, it's just too early to make a call on this. And temperature-wise, uh, down below, once the front uh, approaches, it looks like temperatures will cool things down uh, into the upper 70s and into the low 80s. And again, if you go more north in the Mississippi Valley, highs will be mostly in the mid to upper 70s and maybe some around 80 degrees or so so uh so there you uh there you pretty much have it here guys <clears throat> all right gang i'm gonna go ahead and start wrapping up this uh facebook live feed on this uh monday evening so i expect to have the next uh, live update tomorrow night same time at eight o'clock and i will continue as always of course by posting my notes or updates on my blog and social media pages 24 7. But in the meantime, hope you all enjoy the rest of your Monday evening. And remember to take care of yourselves and each other. And God bless.